train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to another Natural Galant bodybuilding vlog slash live workout slash whatever it is uh, because I've been doing a little bit less live stuff lately on Sundays but I've been still putting up vlogs and the reason for that is because uh, I just didn't want people to have to sit through some of the dead time in between sets and all that kind of stuff so ultimately I will do some live stuff at some point but I will also do the vlogs and do some more editing just based on what I think is more suitable or what might be more interesting to you guys so Today I'm going to be doing some squats and I'm going to stick to 315 and just do sets of uh, 20 to 20 something reps or whatever. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it just feels right. Now, of course, I've got long femurs and I'm built like an ostrich in some way. So I'm not doing it, you know, the parallel squats or whatever. This is just the way I lift because this is what worked for me. This is what built competition winning legs. And at the same time, uh, just so you know, I do have a wide angle lens on my camera right now. So it does distort how everything looks. So if you notice the plates on one side and then... Uh, the plates on the other side it kind of looks like this weird kind of skateboardy type of action uh, sometimes i like messing up the lenses because this is like my, my creative endeavor you know i get to look at the gym from a different angle and have some fun with the creative cinematography type aspects of this whole thing so <laughs> so i hope you like it let me know if you like that kind of angle or not so welcome to the lab workout we we'll to be doing some legs today and see if i can get some shoulders and tries in but i'm doing a little bit of higher volume and i don't have a lot of time here in the gym so uh, we'll see what i can get in right on squats, I always start with a few warm-ups of uh, one plate, maybe one warm-up with one plate, but then I do uh, a few warm-ups with two plates, depending on how I feel. And then I move up to three plates and see you know, how many reps I can get. And sometimes I'll move up with more weight than that. But right now I'm really enjoying just squatting for uh, medium to high reps, you know, 15 to 25 reps. I find that I get more out of it. My lower back is less of a weak link in the whole exercise and the hamstring stretch as well as the quadricep burn becomes more the weak link and it just really burns my legs out. Like I'm sore for about two, three days after in a lot of cases, right? So uh, I do find that higher reps with squats seems to be the better idea for me. Uh, you might be a little different. Some of you guys are doing five reps and of course, if you're doing ass to the grass tape squats, then obviously a five rep set is a little bit different. Uh, it's probably equivalent to about a 15 rep set or 12 rep set for, you know, more of a partial type movement, right? Uh, but you know, the way I squat, this is actually full range for me, unless I want to bring my knees forward and round the lower back. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep that tension on the hamstrings and on the quads. And uh, yeah, this feels the like the most comfortable way to move for me. So again, uh, I, I always encourage you to find your own range and find your own way of moving. That's that's just paramount, you know, and everybody's going to move differently. And because squats have so much counterbalancing going on, your lengths of your joints make such a big difference, you know. So if somebody has a really short femur and a longer lower back and, and longer tibias, they'll be, you know, standing straight up and down and squatting right butt to the floor, right? So I feel like he-man. We got some branch chains in here. Do you wonder what that is? Branch chains, a little bit of glutamine and citrulline in here. There's no stimulants in it. It just depends on how you're built, right? So honestly, just honor how you're built. That's the most important thing. Just honor how you're built. Somebody asked in the comments what I've been doing differently with my diet. And basically I've been sticking to a diet program of some sort, you know, to lose a little bit of 
fat, of course. Uh, but ultimately, I started to lean out and I started to lose a little bit of muscle. So I knew I was going too low in the calories. So what I did was I started to bring up my calories again through fats at first. And then at some point, I started to bring in a little bit of carbs and I started to notice that my muscles were really, uh, you know, doing well with extra carbohydrates, you know, to get that fullness. And carbs do have a protein sparing effect. So they do assist you with keeping your muscle tissue when you're under a diet. So if you do too much, you stay fat. And if you lower them a little bit, then you get leaner, right? So uh, what I did in order to compensate for this is that I then started to lower the fats and then I'm going on a medium carbohydrate diet with lower fat, right? Uh, but, but again, I'm not really sold on one diet or the other. I'm just thinking that whatever feels like the right thing for you at the time will work. And ultimately before I was eating way too much carbs. So I wanted to just wean myself off of that carb addiction in eating too much carbs through low fat sources, such as, you know, rice cakes and all this kind of stuff. So I said, okay, I got to wean myself off this. So that's why I went on the straight protein and uh, nuts and seeds and, uh, and, and salad type diet for, for a little while there. And then what I did was I found that once I started to carb up a little bit, my body was starting to really react to it well. So sometimes I think when you go on a lower carb diet for a period of time, you help reset your blood sugar so that when you do have carbohydrates again, your body uh, uses them more appropriately. It doesn't spike your blood sugar quite so much. So I think this is really what's happening is that now when I'm taking in some carbohydrates, my body's starting to use them differently. So once again, that's why I mix things up with my diet. I, I'm not really a follower of any one thing. I just know that if you take in too many energy calories, you will not burn fat. That's it. It's just that simple. Now, the energy calories can come from fat or from carbs. Uh, but ultimately, what my main goal is right now is to put on muscle mass at the same time as lose some body fat. And that's a very hard thing to do. Uh, so ultimately, I'm I'm okay with maintaining my body fat level with where I'm at at this point, as long as I'm not putting more on. And then I will feed my body as much protein as possible and whatever food it needs in order for it to grow a little bit muscle so I can actually bring up my weak links, right? That's, that's really what I'm doing right now. So for any of you guys out there that want to know what I'm doing with my diet, that, that's it really. Aside from lowering my fat intake and upping my carbohydrate intake, and my carbohydrates usually are from dates mostly, I have some dates in my salads and I have like a low fat type dressing in there and I eat that like two to three times a day with some chicken breast in there and then I may have some sushi or some meal with some white rice in it which isn't the best carb in the world but it's pretty good if you have it around a workout then it's not so bad right so I just have one meal of carbs a day like that one one meal of starch you could say and then the rest I have a few dates with my salads and chicken and uh, so forth so that's what I'm doing on my diet front uh, what I'm doing as far as my training though is that I've upped the volume and by upping the volume I'm hoping on shocking the system as far as getting the body to store more carbs and store more glycogen and creatine in the muscle cells and pump some of the muscles up you know so I don't look like a pancake I start to look more filled out and more round and all this kind of stuff so that's the funny thing when you start eating a lower carbohydrate diet uh, sometimes you will have a, an appearance of being very flat and your muscles won't pop that well. So once you start taking in some carbs again, then your muscles fill out. That's why a lot of bodybuilders carb up, right? And some of them actually ruin their contests because they carb up too much. And here I'm showing you actually dumbbell presses. I was doing them really deep there just to show you that I can do it. But I just find it's just not a good way to work the shoulders. I find it actually puts too much strain on the tendons and not enough on the actual belly of the muscles. So that's why I don't do it. So I'm just proving to you that I can if I want, right? So see, I'm pretty cool. See, I can be a part of the cool crowd too. See? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll do one, one more set, then I'll move this in triceps. So a little bit less volume workout today, but still a good one. Now, as I said there, my volume is a little lower today and the reason why is because the gym closes early on the weekends my gym has pretty much the shittiest hours of any sort of hardcore gym i've ever seen in my life it's only open to eight o'clock on saturday and sunday so uh, it's just horrible so anyway that's one thing i would say that's just shitty about this gym i mean <laughs> there's a lot of other good parts about it but that's one thing that really sucks so i'm just trying to get my workout in uh, because of course i came to the gym after some editing video and all the rest of it and i'm trying to get in about five six sets of squats and usually I was getting in seven sets or 10 sets for legs. So I compromised, so I got about five or six sets of squats in. And then I went to shoulders. And of course I planned on doing some triceps, but I just didn't have time to fit it into the workout while I was in the gym here. But as you can see, I went from some shoulder presses and then I went right into some rear delts. And to save time and to also get a little bit more shoulder work in, I'm going from rear delts right into some lateral raises.
so here I'll show you from a different angle what I'm doing here. So I'm just doing the, you know, rear delt pec deck, uh, pec deck in the rear delt sort of format. Rear delts on the pec deck. I don't know what you want to call this. It's like a reverse fly, okay? Rear delt fly, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, rear delt lateral. Okay, there we go. That, that might work. Rear delt lateral. And then from there, I, I just wrap out, you know, do 20, 30, 40 reps, whatever it is I feel like doing, honestly. And then once I got that pump and got that burn and I feel like I've done as many reps as I can with good form, then I move over to the lateral raises. And of course, because, uh, you know, I've talked about this a million times, but because one of my shoulders sits differently than the other, uh, my lateral raise is a little bit off kilter. So it's a good thing I'm not a bird because if I was a bird, I'd be flying around in circles, but uh, that's okay. You could still train anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like training through adversity is really what this is all about, as long as it's smart. Okay. I'm not saying to train through injury, but uh, I have uh, just some issues with the with the shoulder because it just sits differently because of the torn labrum, but it doesn't mean I can't get a good delt workout in and I'm not getting any joint pain from any of this, right? So. Uh, my right arm does go up differently than the left one, but that's just because of labral tear. So it has really nothing to do with me ignoring the stimulus that my body's giving me. So just so you know, so uh, any of you guys out there that are worried about me, don't worry. It's it's all right. Don't worry. I'm, I'm doing fine. But <laughs> but anyway, as you can see, I get quite a good burn from this. And I love doing rear delts first uh, because you just really get that deep connection with that uh, baseball type look in the shoulder. You know, you really get that softball type look in the shoulders when you really focus on those rear delts first. So if you want that look you know you just go for the rear delts just start training rear delts and then do front delts after because everybody knows you know you get a lot of front delt work from a lot of your bench pressing so don't be too focused on getting all front pressing movements in all the time sometimes you really got to work on those rear parts and that'll really bring your physique together it'll really bring it out and, and make it look more balanced Okay, I ran out of time, so I'll have to do some triceps at home. Make sure you share my stuff if you like it. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and take care for now. There you go, train the muscles, not the joints. Guaranteed to make your back bigger. Guaranteed.